we're going to take a look at running workspaces on FME server. So if you're following along, you can go to page 2-3 in the training manual. And we'll start on chapter 2. So inside this section, we're going to be looking at how workbench and server are tied together, how to manage workspaces on FME server, dealing with source dataset management, and the various ways of running workspaces on FME server. So FME server itself can be called a model-driven a model architecture. This simply means that the definition of what a translation does is specified using a model or a workspace as it would be called inside FME. FME server and FME workbench are closely linked. So FME workbench itself could actually essentially be uh, called a client of FME server. It can connect to the server and publish workspaces inter and interact back and forth. So a typical authoring workflow would go something like this. You would create a workspace using FME Workbench. Then you would publish that workspace to FME Server through tools inside FME Workbench itself. From there, workbenches can be run on FME Server through any one of the available services. So you can see here we've got Workbench. It can connect to the server. We've got the services here as a front end. So these deal with communication between the clients, which could be Workbench, or it could be something like the, uh, the web browser, which deal with communication between these clients and the server backend itself. Uh, once a workspace has been uploaded or published to FME server, it can be maintained by downloading the workspace from the server, making any updates with Workbench, and then republishing back to FME server. So this process of downloading, editing, and republishing is all done through FME Workbench. So again, FME Workbench would be considered a client of FME Server because it has the ability to transfer workspaces to and from an FME Server repository. Specifically, it has options to publish a workspace to FME Server, republish a workspace to FME Server, and download a workspace from FME Server. So if you're inside Workbench and you click on the File menu, you'll see these three options to interact with FME Server itself. So once a workspace has been created, it can be published from Workbench through a wizard interface. The first dialog in this wizard lets you enter connection details. So there are two ways to connect to FME Server that are presented. So we have a web connection at the top here which uses HTTP and the REST API to connect to the server, or you can use Direct Connect, which will connect to the server machine itself uh, using TCP IP. So the Direct Connection option requires that you enter the host name of the local FME server machine, as well as a port number to be able to connect to it. The web connection simply needs a, the URL to a web accessible server. So the next dialog in this wizard lets you set a repository in which to store the workspace that you're publishing. So it looks like this down here. You can choose to use an existing repository or create a brand new repository to store the workspace. And then the final dialog in the wizard lets you register the workspace for use with any of the available services. So you have a list of the services and you can check which ones you'd like to make this workspace available through. Highlighted here, you'll see the job submitter service, kind of midway through the list. This allows FME server to run a workspace exactly as it is. So this would be the closest thing to running a workspace on FME desktop. Uh, this service is ideal for testing workspaces and for running large scale and batch translations that make use of server's ability to queue jobs. So once a workspace has been published to FME Server, the republish tool in FME Workbench will become active immediately after that. 
So this will let you upload any additional changes to the workspace made during the same session with a single click. FME Workbench is also able to download a workspace from a repository on FME server. Something to keep in mind is that the downloaded workspace is a copy of the original. The original version of the workspace will stay in the server repository. So the only time you would actually be making a change to the workspace on the server itself would be when you go to publish a workspace that you've modified back up to the server. So the download from FME server option in Workbench uses a wizard that's similar to the one for publishing. It has the same connection dialog and then provides a dialog to select a repository and then the workspace that you want to download. It then saves a copy of that workspace to your local system. So it'll ask you where you'd like to save it and you can choose somewhere in your documents folder for example. Um, as I'd mentioned a bit earlier, repositories can be compared to folders that are used to store workspace files. However, there's a little bit more to it. So in addition to storing workspaces on the server's file system, information about each workspace, including things like the formats that are used, any published parameters, and so on, is actually stored in FME server's internal database. This database that stores all this addi additional information is referred to as the repository database. Okay, so with that, let's now try out the process of creating a simple workspace and publishing it up to FME server. So we're going to take a look at example 2a for this one, and that's on page 2-8 in the training manual if you're following along yourself. So to start, let's open up FME Workbench. So we're going to be creating a workspace that we're going to be publishing up to FME Server. So you can open up Workbench using the shortcut down in the bottom start bar in your EC2 machine. Or you can go to the Start menu. So let's click on Start, Programs. And then we'll open up FME Desktop and go to FME Workbench. So it might just take a second to start up on your machines. And there we go. Let's put it up here. So let's start by generating a very basic workspace, just going from one format to another. So we'll do this using the Generate Workspace option. So from the Start tab, click on Generate Workspace. So the format we're going to be reading from is GeoTIFF. So for the reader, let's just type in GeoTIFF for the source. And then the data set will be at the path specified in the exercise here on the C drive. So if you click on the uh, Browse button or the File Browser under the reader, we can use the shortcut to go to the FME data folder. So on the left hand side under favorites, click on FME data 2014. And we'll find the data set we're interested in in the data folder here. And scroll down to ortho photos. And we'll just pick one of the ortho photos from inside here. I'm just going to use the one specified 06-07LM. And click open to select that file. And then we'll set up our writer. So we want to convert this GeoTIFF to a JPEG file. So just type in JPEG for the format. JPEG. And it's the first entry. So just the plain JPEG format. And we'll choose a location to write our output data set to. So open up the directory browser again. 
and under favorites again go to FME data 2014 and we'll put this in our output directory so click on output and we'll put it into the training folder inside there and choose select folder when you've gotten to the right spot so you generate workspace dialog should look something like this at this stage and then before we click OK, we're just going to take a look at the workflow options down here. And we're going to change from static schema to a dynamic schema here. So what this will do is this will allow our workspace to be able to take in any one of the TIFF files from our GeoTIFF or Orthophotos directory and be able to convert that out to a JPEG file. So under workflow options, make sure you select dynamic schema at the bottom here. When you've done that, click OK to generate the workspace. OK, and when you're done, your workspace should look something like this. You'll have a reader feature type called all and a writer feature type with the dynamic properties automatically set. So it's dynamic workflow. Okay, so at this stage, let's save a copy of our workspace. So just choose the Save button from the toolbar or choose File, Save As, and we'll just save this workspace somewhere we can find it again. So I'm going to put this in the FME data folder, and I'll put it under Output and put it into my training folder and give this a more useful name. I'm going to call it Exercise 2A. Well, there we go. Definitely have an extra letter in there. There we go. Okay. And save. So let's test out the workspace now just to make sure that everything is working properly before we publish this up to FME server. So from the top, just click the green run button to convert our GeoTIFF file to a JPEG. Okay, so we see at the bottom, translation was successful. That's a good sign. And now let's double check our output folder to make sure that the JPEG file was created. So shortcut to do that, just right click on the writer feature type on the right hand side and choose open containing folder from the right click menu and this will just open up the output location and we should see our geotiff.jpg file right here so it's very confusingly named but it just takes all the defaults so we can adjust this if we wanted to but I'll just leave it for now so you can double click on that if you wanted to check that the file was written correctly. And it should look something like this if you picked uh, the same one as I did. Okay, so next let's just make sure that the dynamic workflow option that we chose is working properly. So this time, instead of uh, clicking just this plain green run button, just click the run button, it's the green arrow with the question mark next to it. That's the prompt and run option. Alternatively, you can go to the file menu and choose prompt and run translation from here. It'll simply pop up with a dialog that'll prompt for any values for any published parameters inside this workspace. So from in here, let's change the source GeoTIFF file. So just click the file browser button and choose another file from anywhere in the orthophotos directory. So I'm just going to choose one at random here. Click OK to run the workspace. And I should see translation successful, zero warnings. And if I go into my output directory and open up this JPEG file, I should see that it's different this time. So I wrote out a different file using the same workspace. So just to double check that everyone's okay on this, can you please raise your hand if you're able to 
get this workspace running successfully. If you have any questions or anything, if you're having any trouble, just feel free to let us know through the questions panel at any time. Okay, so it looks like, yeah, everyone's following along okay. If you ever need any more time on any of these exercises, just uh, send us a question and let us know if we're going a little bit too fast or anything like that as well. Okay. So next, let's actually publish this workspace up to FME Server so that we can run it through the web interface or any one of the server services. So to publish, we're going to use the Publish Wizard. So to publish this workspace, just go to File, Inside Workbench, and choose Publish to FME Server. So for this, we're going to use the direct connection option. The server is installed on the same machine as FME Workbench in this case. So the host name we're going to use is localhost. So just type localhost for the host name. The port number is fine at its default, 7071. And then credentials, we'll enter in our admin username and password. So username admin, password admin. If you want to be able to use these settings every time you publish to FME Server, it's a good idea to go into save this as your defaults. So click on defaults here, we can click the drop down and choose save as my defaults. This will tell FME Server to always use the same connection information when we go through this dialog. It just saves a little bit of time further on if we're going to be publishing up to the same server on multiple occasions. So once you've done that, click the next button. And we should see it connected to our server and we'll see a list of all the repositories and workspaces that currently exist. For this training course, we're going to create our own training repository. So to create a new repository on FME server, just click on the new button at the top here on the top right hand side. And we'll give a repository a name, so I'm going to call it training. You can put in a little description, repository for storing training data or workspaces. And once you're done with that, click OK to actually create the repository. So in this case, Workbench has actually connected to the server and created a repository up on the server already. And then workspace name, so we can use the same name as what we called our workspace when we saved it. And we'll leave everything like that. So click the next button. And we'll um, enter the final section of our wizard that lets us register the workspace with any one of the services that are available. For this exercise, let's just register with the job submitter service and we'll leave it at that. So the default value of having just the job submitter service checked is fine in this case. So once that's done, click the publish button to publish this workspace up to the server itself. If you check the log file at this stage, you should see a published summary and you should see exactly what happened. We published up to our local host server, to the training repository. This is the workspace name that we created. We also uploaded a source file. And we registered with the job submitter service. So that's it for actually putting a workspace up on FME server. So we'll skip the advanced task in this case. If you want to try it out yourself, you can come back and take a look at that um, maybe after the course has ended for today. So next, we're just going to take a look at source data management. Uh, so we're just working through the publishing, the steps for publishing a workspace to server, and we're going to look at how to run it and how to deal with source data sets. So as we go through this chapter, we're going to be looking at concepts 
as we need them for being able to interact with this particular workspace. So the next concept that will be useful to us is this idea of being able to manage the source data set. So as we saw when we ran inside Workbench, we were able to change which GeoTIFF we were going to be converting by running with the prompt and run option. So we want to see exactly how we would interact with that type of option inside FME server. So there are a few different ways to upload and store any resources needed for workspaces to run on FME server. One approach to this, which is new for FME 2014, is by using FME server's resource management option. The advantage of this option is that any data that has been uploaded to the resources can be used by any workspace on the server. So you can access that option through the resources um, section inside the web user interface down here. Uh, inside resources, you'll have several tools for being able to manage the files that are in the resources directory. So you can see here, you can upload, you can create a new folder. Uh, grayed out at the moment are the download, delete, copy, and move options. It's basically the kinds of options that you would see when dealing with any kind of, um, say, directory browser or file browser on your own system. So in the next exercise, let's take a look at uploading some files as resources on FME server. So what we're going to do in this step is actually put some data up to the server that we can then use or access through this inside this workspace to use as a source data set. So we're going to do that through the web user interface for FME server. So if you open up your web browser, you should still be logged in as your guest account. So we'll have to log in again as an administrator so we have access to the resources. So under guest, just choose log out. And the username we'll use again is admin and password is admin and we'll log in. So to access the resources, we'll just choose resources from the left hand side here. And inside here we have the resource management page, which basically lets you see any data sets or any files that are already up in the server's um, install directory and we can interact with them directly through the web browser. So each of these files actually exists in a directory that is present inside the FME server install directory. So we're essentially interacting with the file system on the, the server machine itself. So what we want to do here is we'd like to upload some new data sets. So click on the data folder. I'm just going to close everything here. So make sure you have data selected. And we're going to create a new folder inside the data folder here. So click on data and then we'll choose new folder. We'll give our new folder a name. So we're going to call this ortho photos. So we're just creating a directory on the server itself to store some of our ortho photo files. So click OK to create the folder. And then next, we'd like to actually upload some data sets or upload some files into our orthophotos directory. So make sure orthophotos is selected now and click the upload button. This will open up a section at the top here, which will let you choose the files to upload to this folder. So we're just going to select a few individual files. You can actually choose to upload an entire folder at once. In this case, if we were going to upload every single ortho photo, it might take a little while because there's lots in that folder. So we'll just choose a subset for that. So click on Choose Files here. And we'll navigate to our ortho photos directory in our FME data. So under Favorites, go to FME Data 2014. And then we'll go into Data and ortho photos. And I'm going to select the same four GeoTIFF files here to upload. This is a good subset because they all kind of come together as a mosaic. So eventually when we're going to be changing some settings in our workspace, it'll be handy to have four that uh, fit together nicely. So just choose these four. 
So it's 08, 09, NO, and LM. And also 06, 07, NO, and 06, 07, LM. So these two, and oops, these two. So once you've selected the four that you want to upload, just click the Open button from in here. And you'll see the files get uploaded. And now if we open up our Orthophotos directory, Orthophotos directory, we'll see the four TIFF files that we've published. So these files are now available as resources on FME server. So any workspace that is uploaded to server can now make use of these as part of their workflow. So you can actually choose to use these as maybe source data sets or anywhere else or incorporate them anywhere else inside your workflows. Okay, so that's the next step for being able to run our workspace on the server. Um, next, we're going to take a look at how to actually run a workspace on FME server itself. So if you're following along, we're on page 2-16 now. So once a workspace has been published, it can be accessed through the FME server web interface. The simplest way to run a workspace is using the job submitter work, um, service. So one way to actually run a workspace through the web server web interface is under repositories. You can go into the repository you're interested in find the workspace that you want to run. When you click on that, you'll see a list of all the services that it's registered with. And you'll see two options down there. Let me just get rid of that little bar. OK, so you'll see configure and you'll see run. Uh, so if you just click the run button from under the service that you're interested in, it'll simply run the workspace with default values for any of the published parameters inside there. It's the same as running a workspace using just the Run button inside Workbench. The second option is to run using this Configure option here. And what that lets you do is it'll actually let you configure the translation. It'll let you um, choose values for each of the published parameters that are associated with that particular workspace. So this option is essentially the same as using the Prompt and Run option inside Workbench. So with that, let's try running our workspace. So we'll take a look at that in example 2C, and that's on page 2-19 in the training manual here. And we're going to try running the workspace that we uploaded earlier using both of these methods that I just described. So let's go to the repository section inside the server web interface. From under here, go to your training repository that we just created using Workbench. So we'll see it's now available in the interface. And then click on the workspace that you published. So that's exercise 2A, if you called it that. And we'll see here under registered services, we have it registered with the job submitter service only. And we have these two options, one to run and one to configure. So the run will just run with default options. Uh, so it's not terribly interesting at the moment. So the one we want to take a look at is the configure option because we'd actually like to tell our workspace to use the data sets that we published or that we uploaded to resources as the source. So under the job submitter service, click configure. And we'll see here a list of all the published parameters that exist in our workspace. So we've got our source files, feature types to read, and our destination location. So for the source data set, you'll notice that there are three different tabs with three different options for being able to set the source files. So I'll take a look at the first one, or the specify location tab first. Basically, this lets you type in or hoard, uh, type in a path to the location where that file might be stored. 
So if you have a server installed on your local network, for example, you could put in a UNC path and point to a shared drive somewhere within your network that FME server can read from and run the translation from there. So that's one option. The other option is to use this upload tab here. And what this lets you do is upload the file directly through the web interface. So here, if I wanted to upload my file through this, I could choose under file upload here, I could choose to add my files in. I'll just walk you through it quickly. So I'll just select a tab or a TIFF file. You see it gets uploaded through here. And then inside the upload tab, I can now select this particular file. Uh, so what this option does is when you upload the file through the web interface, it'll take that file and copy it to a temporary location somewhere on the server machine itself. So this file will only exist at this location for a short period of time. So I think it's half an hour by default. It can be configured through the web application service if you want. So this is good if you have lots of users who are temporarily uploading their source files to maybe run through a data validation or a data loading workspace that maybe takes that file and copies it to a centralized repository. So this is good if you know um, these files are going to change frequently and you don't need to use these files in other workspaces on your server. So when a file has been uploaded this way, it is only available to this particular workspace for this particular run. So I'm just going to delete that here. The final option here is to use the Browse tab. And what this lets you do is it lets you choose your source data set from any of the files that have been uploaded to the Resources section inside FME Server. So you'll see the folder list here is the same as the folder list we saw under Resources. And if I expand the data folder, you'll see the orthophotos directory that we created with the four orthophotos that we published before. So what this lets you do is it lets you just select files that have been previously uploaded. Um, uploading the files in this way is a bit more of a permanent option. So these files will always be at this location for as long as you keep these resources active, or as long as you keep the resources there without deleting them. Any workspace on server can use these anywhere inside uh, their workflows. So it makes these data sets available to a wider range of workspaces on your server. So this is good if you know you're always going to be using maybe the same source data set and it's not going to be changing at all very much uh, through time. So let's try running our workspace with these TIFF files that we've uploaded through the browse, uh, uploaded through the resources. So click on the browse tab, open up your orthophotos and maybe select a couple of them. And then down below, we want to choose a location to write our output to. So you see here, there's two options. We can specify a location. So if we wanted to put a path to a specific location that we know exists either on the server machine itself, or maybe we can put in a UNC path to a location somewhere on our network, we can decide to type that in ourselves. The other option here is to use the Browse tab which again lets you write the output of this workspace to a location somewhere in the resources on the server. So here we'll use the browse option again. And we're going to put this to a folder that we're going to be creating inside data. So we can expand that. If you click on the data folder here, click on the new folder button at the top, and we're going to create a folder called output. and then click OK to select that. And then make sure the output folder is checked here. And now we can choose to run the workspace. So you see it takes a few seconds to run in the background and it should come back with a translation successful message. It'll tell you the job ID, so if you want to click on that, you can get information about the job itself. So this just opens up the job history, so you can see the status of the job. You can double check the request data, so if you want to check the values of any published parameters. 
You can check the result data to make sure you know the translation was successful. It wrote out two features. And you can also check the log if you want to check for any warnings or error messages if perhaps the workspace didn't run the way you might expect. Uh, so now that we've run that successfully, let's check our output location. So we pointed that at the resources. So click on resources from the web interface. And let's open up our data folder. And we should see our output folder should have two GeoTIFF files, or at least one GeoTIFF file, to correspond to each orthophoto that we selected as our source. So if you wanted to, you could click that, download the JPEG, and you can take a look just to make sure the output was written as expected. So you can download directly from the resource management uh, section here. Okay, and again, we'll skip the advanced task. Okay, so those are the basics for publishing a workspace to FME server and being able to run with and set the uh, source and destination locations as published parameters inside your workspace. So, okay, so we're back now. So we're just going to continue on where we left off. So we just finished running our first workspace on FME server. And now we're just going to take a look at dealing with translation results. So after a workspace that has been run through the FME server web interface has finished, the results of the translation will be displayed right away. So we saw that when we ran our workspace, we saw a, um, a window that looked something like this. Your workspace name succeeded, translation, job ID, and number of features read, or a number of features written, and how long it took. So you can also check on the status of any jobs that have been submitted to the server through the jobs item in the menu. So if we go into jobs in the web interface, you can see the various tabs related to the jobs themselves. So the queue tab here lets you see any jobs that are currently in the job queue and waiting to be submitted, submitted to the next free engine. The running tab lets you see a list of all the jobs that are currently being run by an engine. So if you have some jobs that run for maybe you know 10 minutes or something like that, or an hour or several hours, depending on what the job's doing, you can take a look at them here. And you can take a look at their status. You can check their log files as they're being created to see exactly what's going on. So if a job is taking a lot longer than you might expect, you can open it up and take a look and see exactly where it might have gotten stuck or what part of the processing is taking longer than you might have thought. And then finally here, we've got the completed tab that lets you see all the jobs that have finished processing. So you can see here you should have probably about two jobs and you'll see one job, the second job should be the one that we just ran, our exercise 2A workspace in our training repository. And from here you can see at a glance kind of how long the workspace took. You can see when it started, when it finished. So this took about 0.02 seconds to run. You can see which engine it ran on and you can see its status. So you can tell if it succeeded or failed directly from this window. If you click on the job from the completed tab, you can get additional details about that job itself. So you can see all the timings when it was submitted or when it went to the queue, when the job started being run by an engine, when it finished, and when the output was delivered. You can also check the request data. So you can see for any of the published parameters, you can see what values were set. So you can see for our source data set, for example, we were reading from the shared resources data. So it's that resources section inside the orthophotos directory. And we're reading two TIFF files in this case. So you can see how many files that you used as a source. And you can see where the output went with the destination data set published parameter. And you can see some of the transformation manager directives. So if you'd set a priority on your job, for example, you can see what that was set to. The next tab lets you see result data. So you can see the name of the log file that was created. Uh, you can check the status message, how many features were written, and any additional information related to that specific workspace. So the requester host, keywords, and all that. And then finally, you can see the full text of the log file for that particular workspace. So you can check exactly what happened inside there. 
You can read it directly in the web interface, or you can choose to download the log file so you can view that inside uh, the text editor. Okay. So with that, I think we'll just skip the next exercise that just involves examining the job history. Just take a look at our job. I think we've seen enough of that at this stage. So you're welcome to work through that if you want to take a closer look yourself. So with that, that is the end of the second chapter here.